As a software engineer, I've worked with various kinds of monitor setups over the years. Dual monitors, vertical monitors, stack displays, and even throwing an iPad now and then. But when I started building my home workspace, I wanted to test all of them for myself, see what actually works for focus, comfort, and getting things done. So in this video, I'll walk through seven different monitor setups, the pros and cons of each, what I liked, what frustrated me, and which one I'd actually recommend, whether you're working from home or just trying to stay productive. So the first and classic setup that I've used is a dual monitor setup. Now, unfortunately, I don't have many old photos to share from the places that I've worked in the past, but I did manage to dig up an old one. And having a side-by-side -side monitor is great, especially when they are identical because one, you get instant screen space with a natural divider as the monitor, so you can drag windows and maximize them easily. Two, you will get the same color image. And three, it immediately obeys the laws of symmetry. And I thought I'd give this a shot at home since I have a spare monitor. And then I was instantly reminded that having a side-by-side -side monitor was not a great idea. One, you have your head turned slightly when looking at one monitor, and most of the time you'll be focused on one thing. So your head is facing one side for an extended period of time. And two, you see that bezel gap or split right down in the middle. It's not great for obvious reasons. And three, when it's not identical monitors, you're gonna have some color and clarity inconsistencies. So the natural fix is placing the secondary monitor to the side and whether it's on the left or right is a personal preference. And that made it instantly better. Having one display directly facing you so you can focus on the main task and then having a secondary display on the side for secondary things. The downside, in my case was because I have such a large monitor, looking to the side was a bit straining. And that 16 by nine screen felt a bit wasted for a secondary display or not necessary. The other downside is that it's not symmetrical and does trigger my OCD a bit. To solve the symmetry issue, you can also add a third monitor. And I think for some, this may be the best setup. The downside is that you may need a display or docking hub and machine capable of multiple displays. I didn't really need a third display necessary and it would only meet my OCD symmetry needs. Then I thought, why not try out the vertical layout? This has a huge advantage. Scrolling through documentation or doing code reviews, well, there isn't much scrolling because you can just read the whole thing. As for doom scrolling, well, why do it on a small phone screen when you can go big on a 27 inch vertical display? But all this vertical space does come with a downside. You end up looking up and down a lot and you have to look back at your main screen and it can be a lot of head movement. And by the way, what I may experience may not be the same for you. So please take these layouts and ideas as inspirations and considerations for your setups. And with all these different monitor setups, figuring out where to put your webcam, especially if you're working remotely, can be a bit of a problem. And this is where today's sponsor of the video comes in, Obspot. This is the Obspot Meet 2, an AI powered 4K webcam. It's about the half the size of a credit card, smaller than my AirPods Pro. Comes with this foldable mounting clip, which allows you to mount it on various monitors and laptops. And in my situation, I can even place it above my monitor light stand. The webcam attaches onto the clip magnetically and you can position it in landscape or portrait mode. You'll also find a standard threaded tripod mount underneath for additional mounting options. Also, the Meet 2 has some fancy AI auto framing capabilities. When enabled, the Meet 2 can follow you around, keeping you in frame for those times you may have a bit more dynamic meeting. Or maybe you're streaming and you often find yourself grabbing something in the background to show your audience. The included software also comes with beauty mode where you can apply simple blurred backgrounds for some privacy or give you a video image a bit more life by using various filters. And you can go as far as using the retouch tool and you can make a few adjustments so that you can appear a bit more serious for those, you know, serious meetings you may have. All in all, the Meet 2 is a compact 4K webcam with its software, plenty of settings, giving you plenty of configuration options the ability to record, use it as a virtual camera in OBS for great for streaming content. And when you're done for the day, you can manually put it to sleep or with a bit of peace of mind, you can use the included lens cap. It can also be stored magnetically on the clip when not needed. To find out more about the Meet 2, check out the link in the description below. And thank you, Obspot, for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, I also happen to have this 15 inch portable monitor display. And I thought, why not have this attached vertically to the Apple Studio display? And I have to say, it's almost perfect. One, it addressed the issue of not having to look up and down constantly with the 27 inch Samsung monitor. And two, it's not too big and overwhelming that engulfs your workspace area. And three, it's almost the same size as the Apple Studio display when it comes 
to position vertically, which helps with light OCD levels. The monitor gives plenty of vertical space for reading documentation, code reviews, and using secondary tools for short periods of time, and great for leaving monitoring dashboards. I also tried the stack setup where you have one monitor on top and one below. Now I wanted to try the 27 inch Samsung monitor below, but that proved a bit difficult because the Apple Studio display was on the stand and you can't take it. I don't have the VESA mount version and Tim Cook has ghosted me. But I did try the 15 inch monitor display and this was okay to some extent. Some of you may not have that luxury of space and can't have monitors on the side and having one below is an option but there's a small tiny issue that I came across and that's the dock. Well, if you're on Windows, you may not have this issue, but when you have them arranged in Mac OS on top, one on top of the other, you cannot access the dock on the primary display. Even if you have the automatically hide and show the dock setting disabled in the system preferences, you cannot activate the dock. The cursor just seems to enter the second screen. So that was a bit of an issue for me. And as much as I liked having a 15 inch to the side and the bottom, there was another issue I faced and it's crispiness. Well, not in the crunchy sense, but in the sharpness and clarity sense because the Apple Studio Retina display, which is annoyingly so crisp and clear, when you glance at a secondary display, you cannot but notice the instant non-consistency in display. One moment looking at a display that's very crisp, very sharp. The next, the IPS matte display and ever so slightly blurry image. And when you're flickering between the two, it does play on your eyes a bit and get a bit distracting. And for setup six, which I use now and then, it's where I have the iPad mini below the main display. The positives of this is no extra wires or needed. The only one is the cable to keep it charged. And there's more consistency in displays, but a bit small for multitasking. And for the seventh setup is the ultra wide. Now, unfortunately I don't have an ultra wide, so I can't speak from experience, but having spent some time researching, one thing that does come up a lot is the ultra wide has the benefits of giving you the screen space of two or even three monitors without the monitor bezel dividers. But you may also suffer from neck strain constantly looking from side to side. This might be great for gaming experience and it all depends on how wide your monitor is and whether it's curved or not. This setup may work for you, others it may not. With all these setups, what is there to learn and what's best? Well, having extra monitors gives you more screen space for sure but having more screen space does not mean maximum productivity and best ergonomics, because based on how the monitor is laid out, you may have to swivel your head left and right or look up and down, and you may have these horrible monitor bezel dividers between monitors. And you may have to purchase a dock or hub in some instances to support multiple monitor displays. But if the setup works for you, then by all means stick with it. And having non-identical monitors can be problematic, because they have different color inconsistencies, temperatures and clarity, and that can be distracting. But from all the setups, I think the best is having a large enough single monitor where it's facing you directly. You can have split windows easily with good software such as rectangle, or if you're on windows, you can use fancy zones, which allows you to have split windows. So you can have apps side by side without being too cramped. All the while not being too wide, making you have to swing your head left and right too much and having a secondary display to the side is uh, nice to have. Whether you're a working professional, engineer, gamer, let me know what setup you're running, what you like about it, what you don't like about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about what kind of setups you have. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in one of these boxes that YouTube recommends. Catch your next one.